Well, what a day I've had today, folks. We've got potentially 2,000-year-old Roman silver. We've got a unicorn. And we've also got a silver butterfly. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire. And we've got a lovely, freshly ploughed field, which hasn't been planted yet. Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire in a freezing cold Scotland. Well, it has turned back to winter. Woolly hats are on. I've got the gloves as well. And uh, I am back on the field where I found that silver ingot, which may be Roman. May well be 2,000 years old. We'll wait to see what the museum have got to say about that one. But uh, we've had over a dozen silver ingots off the fields here, off the Roman fields. So hopefully, more to come. Now, as you've just seen, the farmer has ploughed this field since I was on it a few days ago. Um, but he didn't get the chance to plant it because it started to rain. So he's left it and I am now going to go and detect it. So hopefully, lots more new signals. So enough of my gibbering. Let's go and see if we can find some coins and relics. It has taken just five minutes to get signal number one and it's right there. A very nice crisp 84 and I tell you what, I think I can see it and that could be a coin or a button. I think it's a button. It is. It's a button. It is a button, but it does look quite sort of decorated. It's got an unusual shape about it. It's got a kind of a florally edge. Might be a little bit more decoration on it. Could have been gold gilded at one point. It's got a few sort of flecks of colour coming through. And on the back, that's where the loop would have been. And there's probably a maker's mark on there somewhere. It's definitely a few letters. It looks like it says Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland. And uh, my guess would be that's probably a Georgian. So I would say probably around the time of George III. So 1760 to 1820. But not bad. Almost a couple of hundred years old. Maybe a wee bit more for the first signal of the day. Well, this one was a bit dodgy. 60 down to 40, dug it up, and this little copper, copper alloy looking thing has come out the ground. Um, almost looks a bit like a bullet, but ah, it's got blue. It's got blue paint on it, so it's not that old. Well, there's writing. We have got some writing. Well, that's weird. It says Isle of Skye. <laughs> so we've gone from Edinburgh. To the Isle of Skye. What is that going to be? Give it a wee rub with a bendy thumb. That's not really helped. Isle of Skye. And it goes to a point. But I don't know what it is. Well, not particularly old if it's got blue paint on it. I wonder if it could even be part of a pen. Well, it could be. It could be a ballpoint. So maybe it's someone's tourist gift. A ballpoint pen from the Isle of Skye. The weird things that you find in fields. Signals are coming thick and fast. This one. 97, 93, 96. Could be the dreaded aluminium, but could be something else. 91. 92, a bit more consistent now. Could be a wee Georgian coin. Oh, it is a coin. It's not Georgian though, because it looks like a thruppence. And it is. We're straight in with a coin. A coin in the first 10 minutes or so. So you can see the sea thrifts. 
there, it's a little bit worn, so it's a threepence or three pence, and I've got a date of 1943. And it's pretty crusty on the other side. These are made with a some sort of cupra nickel, so there's no silver in these threepences. Um, that would be 1943. That would be George the Sixth. So that was the the late Queen Elizabeth the Second's father. And 1943, slap bang, in the middle of World War II. Well, it's all gone a little bit quiet. I've been going for about 30, 35 minutes without a signal. And I decided, because I'm in the area where I got the silver ingot, I'm going back and forward. I thought I would change over to programme number 9, which is Relic. And the thing about Relic is it's all metal mode, so it picks up every single metal target that there possibly is um, but right here finally I've got one that's a positive signal 84 85 so could be a coin could be copper could be lead don't really use relic a lot well, now it's just vanished. So maybe it's a coin and I've turned it on its edge. Let's take another speed fill out. Okay, we're out. Three spade fills down. Fingers crossed. It's going to be something epic. Ah, there's something there that's round. And that is... I think it's a button. Oh, it could be a coin. Could be. Ah, no, it's not. It's a button. I think it's a button. It's a very chunky little button. You can see why I thought it was a coin. Yeah, I think that's where the shank's been. But it does almost look like it's got a head on it. It has got a head on it. Well, that is weird. Because to me, it almost looks Roman. Doesn't it? Well, that is very strange. Very strange. How does that know? Yeah, it definitely looks like a shank from a button. But that is a very, very strange find. A Roman button. Right. I, uh, I'm going to clean this up off camera and get right back to you, so don't go anywhere. This definitely comes under the category of yet another weird find. It almost looks like a Roman coin, it really does, but it's got the right shape, it's got the right thickness, but on the reverse, it definitely looks like a button. So maybe it's just a, a modernish button, a Georgian or Victorian that just for some obscure reason had a face on it. Can't think I've ever had a button with a face on it before. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's definitely letters there. It looks like an M, an E and a D. Something Med. Achmed. Don't think there were any Roman emperors that I can think of that had M, E, D at the end of their name. But, well, let me know your thoughts in the comments and uh, we'll have a look at this in the light box once I get home. Well, having just found that coin that might be a button, that might be a Roman coin, um, let me just try and get you out the wind a bit. I got a signal there, it was 76, it was really, really weak. Quite a poor target. Three or four spade fills down, about nine inches. I've pulled out that. And I tell you what, I think that is silver. And it looks almost a bit like a kind of twisted bracelet or twisted ring or something like that. And that could potentially be Roman. I think it is. I think it's... I'll zoom you in a little bit. I think it is part of a bigger object. Look, it looks like it's snapped there because that's actually, that's actually quite sharp. 
that edge. So it looks like it's been broken or maybe even intentionally cut. And I think that is silver. It's got the right weight. It's got the right colour. And I don't know about this end, whether it's been broken or whether that's just some sort of terminal at the end. It's slightly flattened. But that could be something epic. That could be several thousand years old. So again, we may have another fantastic item. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, but to me... I think that is. I think that is going to be Roman or Iron Age. I think that is some sort of twisted silver. I don't think it's... It's definitely not stainless steel. I don't see what else it can be other than silver. So that could be really, really amazing. So as ever, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And it's going to be another one for the archaeologists to look at. They are going to be busy fantastic silver and potentially very old silver well we've got another digger this one is similar to the bit of silver 76 77 but it is a pretty ear blowing target well we're out well, it wasn't particularly deep, but it does sound very good. What's that? Nope, that's a stone. Ah! There is a great big buckle. That is a lovely big horse buckle, complete with bar. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful patina on it as well. That's probably got a bit of age to it. It could well be Georgian. Uh, that sort of decorated design. There would have been an iron pin there, which is broken and snapped off. And that's probably how the buckle got lost in the first place. But it's probably Georgian, I'm guessing. 1760, 1820, maybe a little bit later, 1850. But I doubt it's any later than that. And um, this would have been a pa probably attached to a big... Shire horse, but then again the fact it's quite decorated, maybe it was a, a sort of domestic horse, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Nice, I like that. This was another dodgy signal, it was jumping from an iron tone all the way up to a mid to lower high tone, if that makes sense. Uh, and it's now coming through at 69.70 with the top off. So let's take another speed fill out. And then, right, we're out. We are out. So as ever, as I always say, if you get a target, it doesn't sound quite right, take the top off. Oh, there we are. That is it. Looks like a bit of lead, it is. I think it's a bit of lead pipe. Yep, it's a bit of lead pipe. It's been crimped on the end and bent over on that end. But... Could have been something good. Always worth checking. I've had lots of bits of aluminium and quite a few big lumps of iron. This one sounds a little bit better. 63-64. Well, at least it isn't a deep one. Right. Come on, give us some Roman treasures. What's that? That's a rock, that's a bit of straw. Oh, we've got a coin. Ha! Can't be a coin, must be a button. No, I think it's a coin. God, that was low for a coin. Really low. We've got a date at the bottom. I think it's a half penny. Let's give it a wee gentle rub. It looks like 1876, I think. So it's going to be Victoria. Well, didn't even sound remotely like a coin. But I'm happy it is a coin. 
let's get the bendy thumbs on it and you can just make out Queen Victoria facing to the left so she was the longest serving monarch 1836, 1837 all the way through to 1901 until Queen Elizabeth II and she overtook her so yeah, 1876 I think we've got there. So kind of halfway, halfway through her reign. That's a nice coin. I'm happy with that. That was the Queen Victoria halfpenny. And right here, we've got a 72, 74, but occasionally it's dropping away down to 40. I don't use the relic program all that much, so I'm not quite sure what to expect. Because I didn't expect a coin on the last one. Oh, is that it? That is it, it's a little musket ball. Or a little pistol shot actually. A little lead shot. So it's got a little nipple on the top, a little sprue. But it does look like it's been fired because it's a bit misshapen. So maybe they didn't do a very good job of trimming that off. But that's from a little uh, a little DAG. D-double-A-G, a little uh, hand pistol. And they were really popular. 16, 17, into the very beginning of the 1800s. There was actually a little village in Scotland. I was reading a bit about these old pistols. And uh, there's a village called Dune, D-O-U-N-E. And it was world famous for making little hand pistols in the 16, 17 and 1800s and apparently it was a Dune pistol that fired the first shot in the American Wars of Independence so there you go brilliant well, we've got another dodgy one it's anywhere from nope I don't know what's going on here. This is anywhere from 0 to all the way up to 68. Now it's 83 to 53. You always got to check. I think it's going to be big iron. Could be more than one target. Could be an iron target and a and a not so iron target. But we've got to keep trying just to make sure. Ah, uh, 77, 80. It's all over the shop. Right, come on. How you get? See if we can narrow down where I'm digging with a pinpointer. Let's get that out of the way. Well, we're still down there. I'm going to turn you off for a minute and I'm going to get back to you. Well, this is proof at why you dig dodgy signals. Because that is a great big lump of ploughshare, a great big bit of iron, but on the same spade full, look right there. Now, I don't think it's a coin. I think it's a button. And it is a button. There's something going on on it. And we've definitely got a button. Because we've got letters. So, what do we have? We have got... I think it's Furman. Furman and Sons Limited. Or it could be Ermine and Sons Limited. And then we've got letters down here that I can't read. 
apart from in the middle, where we've got L O N D O N. London. London, England. And that's where the shank would be. And on the other side, what have we got? Ah, we've got a unicorn. It is. We have got what looks like a unicorn. Definitely, look. You see the great big horn coming out the top of the head. It's got a flowing mane. And it definitely looks very horse-like to me. So that is a unicorn. And a unicorn is the national animal of Scotland. Did you know that? So the, uh, the Stuarts who reigned in Scotland from the end of the 14th century all the way through to 1714, they adopted the unicorn as their national animal, the national symbol. And there was a lot of similarities or a lot of crossover between Jesus and a unicorn because of purity, strength and obviously the resurrection as well because unicorns effectively are immortal. They live forever. So there you go. And in contrast, Jesus was reborn. So there, that is stunning. Really, really nice. So that's probably going to be, I would think, 17 or 1800s. I'm sure I'll probably be able to find this online, but that is a really lovely button. Possibly military, but it could also be a, um, uh, what do we call it? A, uh, like a, an estate. Um, I can't think of the word. It's gone from my head, but all the, all the workers would wear buttons. A livery button. That's the one I'm looking for. A livery button. And uh, all the same estate workers, all the footmen, all the butlers and so on would wear the same buttons on their waistcoats and jackets. That is really nice. I like that a lot. Brilliant find. Honestly, I love ploughed soil. I really do, because this field, it was just running out of targets. And my God, what a difference being ploughed makes. 58... 59 for this one. Could be a button. Could be lead. Could be copper. Could be gold. Well, it's out at the second spade full. Fingers crossed it's something good. What's that? That's it there, it's a bit of lead. It's a little fragment of lead. Purpose and age unknown. But who knows, it could be thousands of years old. Another ear blower. Seventy five, seventy six, sounds very good. Are we deep or are we shallow? Oh my god. We might have silver. It's maybe a military, like a cat badge or something. No. What is that? That is a... Uh, yeah, some sort of badge or something. It's a bit bent, as you can see. What is that? It's not a butterfly, is it? I think it is. It's maybe some sort of brooch. Yeah, look, there's a... There's a little fitting right there. Les, your wee tool. There we go, look. That is a little pin. Right there. It's a bit baked on. You'll never forget, you'll never guess what I forgot today. I was hoping no one would notice. Because um, I was hoping I wouldn't find in that I needed to wash. I forgot my water bottle. Honestly, I've been doing so well recently. And I forgot my water bottle. Folks, that is a butterfly. That is a butterfly. I've had a peacock recently as well. But that is a butterfly. 
And don't worry, I'm not being too rough before anyone says you're scratching it. I'm just giving it a wee gentle touch up. Beautiful. Well, there is a little stream not far away. So I'm going to go and give this a little wash. And I'll get right back to you. Brilliant. Well, look at that. What a piece of workmanship that is. That is a butterfly. A 100%. And it's got all these little legs, which are kind of movable. I can gently just move some of them. I think there's probably been a head up here which has snapped off. Surprising it's even kept all four of its wings. But it is quite badly cracked there, so it's not holding on by much. And you can see there's a connection there where there's probably been a pin. And also here, there's a little loop, which uh, I think is a bit more than decoration so I think there's been a, a pin running between there and the clasp and it's been lost, it's snapped but my guess is I'm going to say Victorian it's probably 1830s through to 1900 but I do believe that that is silver and uh, if I zoom in, look at the workmanship on it it's really really beautiful so that's individual strands of silver which have all been wrapped and inlaid and swirled around to create that beautiful effect. I cannot believe that that has even survived in the field. So there must have been some incredibly well-dressed farmers and farm ladies, is that even a word? Um, in the fields back in the day. My only belief is that Possibly this broke and someone just put it in the, in the rubbish because there's signs of pottery and glass all over this field and I suspect it's probably just been thrown away into the dustbin and then the dustbin's been scattered all over the field. But that is a thing of beauty. Really, really nice. It's also going to be my last signal of the day because dinner is ready. Well, nearly because I've got to go home and make it. So I'm going to leave you there, but don't go anywhere, because I'm going to go and get the light box out, and we can have a closer look at some of these fantastic finds. Well, what a day I've had today, folks. We've got potentially 2,000-year-old Roman silver, we've got a unicorn, and we've also got a silver butterfly. So don't go anywhere. Welcome to the light box. Well, this is probably the best three, or certainly the most interesting three finds of today. Um, start off with this. So, is it a Roman coin, or is it a button? Well, look at the back. I think it's a button. See that raised point in the middle? And I think it's probably just a really awkward coincidence that um, it's come off a field which has produced a lot of Roman coins, or the neighbouring field has. This actual field hasn't produced that many Roman coins, but it does make you think. My guess would be this is probably a Georgian button, or maybe even as late as Victorian, so sometime from 1760 to maybe 1850. But if you know or have seen any similarities, then let me know in the comments. Next up, we've potentially got another piece of very ancient silver. So I've had it tested, and it is silver. I'm not sure what sort of content of silver, but it looks like maybe a, a twisted ring or part of a bracelet. Um, it's definitely not stainless steel, and I really don't see what else it can be other than a piece of jewellery, potentially. The only thing is the twist is a bit uneven, as you can see, but who knows. It looks like it's been cut at this end. This end is a bit flatter, um, so I don't know. 
let me know your thoughts in the comments, but to me that could be a fragment of either a ring or a bracelet, and potentially could be Roman or Iron Age, so maybe a few thousand years old, 2000 to be precise, but that would be amazing if it was from the 1st or 2nd century. So again, I'll let me know your thoughts. And then finally, more silver. But look at the detail on that. This is composed of little individual strands of silver wire that have been rolled into little shapes to create a wee butterfly. And uh, it's close to breaking on the back, you can see this one here is all cracked. I think it's lost its head. It's also lost its clasp that would have been here, or a pin. But it's a survivor. And my guess is that that is probably Victorian. Some sort of brooch, a lady's brooch, but again, it's silver. Uh, I can't see any hallmarks on it, but I've had it tested. And it came back as silver just don't know quite the purity of what is silver but um, yeah my guess would be Victorian so probably sometime around 1830 to 1900 now it may well have been broken when it was lost it may have been well not lost but when it turned up in the field because you saw all the fragments of pottery and glass so people have been spreading their junk their rubbish on that field for several hundred years so the chances are I think this might have been broken already and someone just threw it in the trash, threw it in the bin and it got spread over the field because I really can't see a farm worker turning up with a brooch like that. I mean maybe they had it in their hat or maybe they just took pride in their appearance and they lost it while picking potatoes but you just never know. Either way it is a very nice little find. So that's the top three items from today. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, then hit the like and subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And hopefully we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.